Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Alex and usually I talk about coding solutions, but this video will be entirely no code because today I want to show you one of my favorite new tools, Active Pieces. Think of Active Pieces like a free Zapier alternative because it's open source. I installed Active Pieces on my home lab a few weeks ago and started using its workflows. And I've just released version 0.9 that I've been waiting for. And now I'm going to show you why. So that's no code. Okay, so this is Active Pieces. This is their website. As you can see, they have a builder where you can just define a trigger and then you define certain steps in a process that is then getting executed based on the trigger. They have a ton of integrations already, but here's the one that I'm most curious about. So as you can see, the latest release just came out and this is what I've been waiting for, Whisper. So as you may know, Whisper is the technology by OpenAI, which can transcribe audio to text. And I'm big on taking voice notes, but I always found it hard to keep track of them in a written form. So this is where Whisper comes in. What I want to show you today is how you can set up a flow where you can upload a voice file to Google Drive, send it over to OpenAI for a transcription, and then use the text to either add it to Notion or to a Google Doc. That's so exciting. This is my own Active Pieces instance that I'm running. And you can see I have two flows already here. And we talk about them a little bit later in the video because I want to start with the new flow that I've been just teasing. So we can select one of the existing templates, um, but I want to start from scratch. So initially you have to define the trigger. What triggers this flow, right? And I want to make sure that whenever a file is added to Google Drive, we run this flow. I can listen either for a new file or a new folder. So I go with new file and then you need a connection and connections. Let's actually take a step back. I show you what a connection is. Connections are integrations with third party systems. So you can see I have X, formerly Twitter. I have already a Google Drive connection. I have a connection to Notion. So these are all the connections that I can use in the flows. So if I go back to flow now, this is the untitled one that we just started with. So new file. Now I pick a connection. Um, I pick Google Drive because I already connected it. And then it's looking at my folders. And I pick a, a folder here. I call this voice notes. Um, and I have this over here. So you can see this is my Google Drive. This is the folder called voice notes. So it's empty right now. Let's upload a file here. I have this available. So this is a voice note that I just recorded before this video. It's M4A, so it has been uploaded. So let's go back to active pieces because now I can say load data and I will just see what's in there. So we can see this is the file, YouTube voice M4A, right? That's the one over here. And we can use that now to be the input for the following steps. So when there's a new file, what I wanna do is I wanna read it because this is just the event, but now I have to read this file. And I'm using again the Google Drive connection. And now I have to use the file ID. And this is where I use the new file from the previous trigger. And I use the ID that is here. And the destination file name, we can name this anything that we want. I just name it the same as the file ID just to avoid any clashes. So let's test this step. So we can see it has been stored locally under this ID and I now have it available. So next step is I want to send it to Whisper. So there's OpenAI and now I can say transcribe, which is really, really nice. There's also translate, but we're going with transcribe connection. So there's no OpenAI connection yet. I have to create that. And for this, I go to my API keys um, on the OpenAI platform. I create a new secret key for active pieces. Create the key. There it is. I just copy it. We go back to active pieces. Now I can create a new connection and I paste the API key here. And now it requires the audio and the audio is from the read file, the result. So I insert that and now let's test the step. And this is actually using the file and sending it over to OpenAI for a transcription. So you can see the text is this. Hey friends, thanks for watching my YouTube channel. This is a short demo to show you how to transcribe audio notes. Let me know if you liked it, which is exactly what I said in the audio note. So what are we going to do with that now? Ideally, I want to send it to Notion and we can try that, but that doesn't seem to work entirely. Um, so that's because I can either create a database item or update one. So I go with create database item and I'm not sure if this is a known limitation. So I don't want to say this is a bug, but we go with the Notion connection. I already created that earlier. 
So now it needs a database and there is voice notes. And the name, I just use the text. So this is what doesn't seem to work for me right now is that I only can provide the name for the database item, but that's really not what I want because let's check my notion. So this is the database that I pre-created, voice notes. And let's actually, let's run this. Let's test this step. So it's using the transcribed data from OpenAI, creating a new item. So let's go back to Notion. It's a back and forth. So we can see this is the text. It's over here, uh, but it's all, it's the name. But I'd rather would have it in here as, as the body of the page, so to say. So maybe this is added in the next release, but still the connection is working. So what we can do instead, let me remove Notion, is um, use Docs. So we can have a Google Docs and we can create a new document. I already have a Google Docs connection here. And the title is, again, I just, or let me use the, the file that I, or the name of the file that I had initially. And the content is actually transcribe text. Let me test the step. So that has been tested successfully, which is good. So let's go over to my Google Docs and you can see here it is uh, YouTube voice M4A, which is the original file title. So let's open that and we can see the text is in there, which is just amazing because I really keep tabs of my thoughts using the voice recorder and now I can just transcribe it and add it to Notion, Google Docs or wherever else I'm needed. So this is one of the flows that's really cool. Let's discard that. So I want to show you the other flows that I have running. So there's a Bitcoin ticker because I usually like to see the Bitcoin price at least once per day. So I can have a timer that says every day at 5 a.m. send an HTTP request so I can even send my own requests. I'm sending it to the CoinGecko API, which is an API that is freely available where I can just say, okay, give me the Bitcoin price against the Euro currency because that's what I'm most interested in. And then that payload is sent in a notification using Notify. I can even check uh, the runs over here. So earlier today, um, this flow has run. And there's another one which I really like. Um, this is the YouTube video broadcast. So whenever I, uh, there's a new video in my channel, so you can see Alex Gutier, if there's a new video in my channel, I check if it's a spring video because usually I make content around spring and spring boot. So this is a condition even, so I can even branch the flows. If the text of the video title contains the word spring, that's even case insensitive, then we say, yes, it's spring or it's not. So I create a tweet about spring, which means I say a new video is out, new video in channel title. So again, I'm using the inputs from YouTube. Say, watch it here, um, then the link to the video. And I add these hashtags because I know this is a spring video and these are the hashtags that make sense. Otherwise, if it's not a spring video, I just say, go check it out without using any hashtags because I usually don't know what video it is. So if you go to Twitter, you can already see this. So these are my previous tweets and these are using that flow. So you can see it says new videos out. It has these hashtags and it's linking to the actual video on YouTube. So the question of course is then, okay, how is this working? Because there's no push. So Active Pieces is checking this trigger like every five minutes, I think, to make sure is there a new video or not. And then if it's the case, this flow is just triggered and again, you can see in the runs, um, this flow has been broadcast earlier. So that's a short intro video about active pieces. There's much more to explore. So let me know if you want to see more of that. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.